Time to put an inline oiler or lubricator on my air compressor, and you need to do the same. Let's go check it out. What's up guys, welcome back. Check it out, if you're a master mechanic, you've been in a shop all your life and stuff, that's what you do for a living, this video is not for you. This video is for your typical homeowner, your person that tinkers around the garage and stuff. You're starting to get some serious tools and all that, and you might not know this, it's gonna help you out. I was talking with a couple buddies and stuff, they were like, what are you gonna do this weekend? I was like, I'm just gonna put an air oiler on the air compressor. They all like didn't know what it was, and it kinda shocked me and stuff. A lot of people, you got your air tool right here, and then you take some air tool oil and you put it in the air tool and you use it or whatever for your job. You don't have a lot of big jobs. It even says oil daily. And a couple of the people didn't even know, they never oiled their tools. So, I don't know, I guess they're still working, whatever. So instead of doing that every time, you can get an inline air oiler. Your air goes through the tool, it picks up oil, and you can select how much, and it goes through your tool. You don't have to worry about it. You do this pretty much with any air compressor you want, no matter the size, uh, and it's a permanent hookup. It's not something you're gonna take on and off between each job. The air compressor that I'm gonna put mine on today, I use two. I actually have the Craftsman six horsepower 30 gallon, and then I have the elusive Craftsman six horsepower 33 gallon back there. That's going to be your stock setup on most of your air compressors. That's your, your pressure switch coming up right there with that box into your selector of your pressure, out to your tool. This thing's the same thing. Pressure switch right there. It goes into, I got an aftermarket Campbell Hausfeld selector on there as well. And this is the air oiler we're going to put on there. It's the Ingersoll Rand, if you need the model and all that. Quarter inch input and output quarter inch MPT so all you'll need to do I just went and got a handful of male to male quarter inch MPT and then I got some 90s to come out because the goal is to take this have it not come way out on the other side of the air compressor we want to keep it all nice and tight one of the things that's going to allow me to do that since we're adding another two three inches with that oiler see how big these factory males are right here I got little bitty ones so that'll cut an inch inch and a half and then when I come out with a 90 at the end, instead of a straight one, it'll keep it all nice and tight and flush. The thing we need to do is get the air out of the air compressor and then we go down to the bottom, there's a little drain valve. But I switched mine over to a quick ball, so I'll just open that up. All right, so these all emptied out. I can go ahead and put my hoses to the side. Pull tool real quick, check that out. Rigid Robo Grip. Goes up and down just like that. When it finds what it wants, just automatically adjusts, locks in. I'll loosen this nut right here. That'll let me take that off. Just like so. Take that off as well. Get a little tiny wire brush and clean out those threads of all that old tape that's in there. I got a coarse and a soft. I'm gonna hit each one of these when I take them out. Clean them up real nice. Tape will like to break it off nice and clean. Then you wind to the right. If you wind the op opposite way, when it turns, it wants to unpeel the tape. So you want the tape ending in the way it's turning. And you can see that old tape I was talking about. So I'll get in there and clean that up. All right. Start her up. Get her nice and snug. Not too snug yet. Just enough where you're like a turn or half turn away because you want room to move it around on that air compressor a little something like that there's the old one so that's saving a three quarters of an inch times two so an inch and a half and that hopefully will make room for that
and a good snug to let that gasket seal. Here's our gauge for our tool pressure. It's got a little thing on top where the oil bubbles around. You can see it's working. It's got a lock here for the reservoir with a little view channel so you can click down to unlock, turn it. When installing, if you have a filter, it has to go first, then the regulator, then the lubricator. So in that order. I had a feeling this would happen. This handle's in a way of putting it on, but it looks like it'll clear once the once I get it on there. So we'll go ahead and take this handle off. Make mine real easy instead of hard. I just take these compression fittings off of here. Pop those out. Something like that. Compression fittings back in. T20 Torx, I'm going to take off this air, air breather right here. One, I'm going to clean it. And two, it's going to give me access to get that handle back on real easy. There we go. We're in business. She fits. Two options here. There's your whole new setup. I could go right back into this right here and then I can have my hose come out and it's got brass on it as well and then it has to have enough room to lean over so it's going to take my hose out here. So I was going to take this one which is a 90 male female into there and then take that to there and have my hose come out nice and tight to where I added an oiler and I've lost real estate and I've got an even cleaner setup. That should turn out really good. Last fixed piece. Right there. For the oil, I just matched the brand with the brand of the oiler itself. Make sure you get the air tool oil and not the actual oil for the compressor. It's got an O-ring on there. Make sure when you take it out, that's still attached. And I'm going to go ahead and just give that O-ring a little bit of oil as well. There we go. We're done. Let me go ahead and fill up the air compressor. Make sure it doesn't have any leaks, but look how clean that setup is. I mean, man, that right there is nice and tight, beautiful. Oil gauge, I can see how much oil is going in. I see the level of my oil. I can see the pressure of my tool, and I can see the pressure of the tank. It's all nice and tight. Uh. I put 100 PSI in the tank. First thing I'm gonna do before I go any further is check for leaks. So I got some soapy water, and I'm gonna go ahead and let air into the hose. Check all these unions real quick. And don't forget, like on this one right here, it's got little studs in the back in case you had more attachments and stuff. So check all of it. Everything looks perfect. Air tool on the end of this. There you go, you can see the oil working as I spray. She works. One last look at it, she's done. That's how she sits when I put her away. And there you go. You want an idea how the hose rolls and all that. I was a little nervous it wouldn't fit in there. But man, it's better than it was before. Happy with it? That was easy. Man, you gotta get you one. Hey guys, that's all I have for today. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't like the video, check out the people on the bottom of my channel called Bad Mofos. Hours and hours of fun. Check them out, check them out. 
Thanks again for watching. Take care. Later. Peace.